Okay, this is Security Plus PBQ number 8AB. This is a little different. Normally, I like to go th with these blind and show you my thought process with this one. I gotta say, it's my least favorite PBQ. I'm gonna explain why uh, for the reasoning. So, we're gonna approach it and then I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. So, as a security consultant for a business, you'll be remediating several significant security issues. One issue is the password policy for network access for users that utilize a customer relationship management application. The current settings have been in place for a long time and are outdated. They do not align with the latest password recommendations published by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Your goal is to evaluate the current policies and note the NIST recommendations and then implement changes requested by the business owner accordingly. It is important to note that the business owner does not know the accurate terminology and will describe his requests as he knows them. Okay, so this is all fluff, doesn't really tell us anything, except that we're going to be referring to NIST documents. Email from the business owner. So now I have to read an email from this business owner who doesn't know what he's talking about, and this is written by a question writer who's trying to imitate a business owner who doesn't know what they're talking about. So let's think about that for a second. All right, hey, so about the password changes, we need the password to change every month and the history to be in line with the changes for one year. I also need password reminders. I remember you mentioning what the NIST says is standard for password length. So let's go with whatever the NIST recommends, but increase the length by two to be extra secure. I can't stand crazy symbols or characters, so let's avoid those. For restrictions, I don't want to allow my pet my any pet names or favorite places, but it's okay to use lucky numbers like 777 or 123. Thanks and let me know what the new password settings are. For reference, it'd be nice to see them side by side with what NIST says. So this is kind of like a logic puzzle question. If you, you watch my videos, you know what I'm talking about when I say that, where you have to pick out things from the scenario and plug them in. But it's asking us also for NIST recommendations, which I, you know, when I first approached this, I would say this would come from NIST 863, which is the password recommendations set forth by NIST. Problem is, that regulation does not give you clear guidelines for many of these settings. And I'm gonna talk, I'll show you the document after we do this. But So I have to kind of, instead of doing this right off the bat, where I'm working through the question from square one, I have to kind of take that and show you where my thought process is on these because I went through this question ahead of time, unlike mo most of these. So anyway, password history. The next, so NIST recommends that you don't keep track of password history anymore, according to 800-63. And we're gonna get into that. First off, NIST is a federal uh, body, okay? It's, they create standards, they create guidelines for federal agencies. So when NIST puts forth guidelines and um, policies like 800-63, you know, those are designed to be loose guidelines. They're not hard requirements in many circumstances. So to go with what they recommend as your password settings will leave you with incredibly weak passwords. So this is a terrible bit of advice to try and just, basically we have to memorize what's in 800-63 with a few pieces of information that are gonna be wrong. And that's what you need to know for the test. So let me explain this to you. First off, this is correct. The password history according to NIST 863, and that's what we're referring to here, is not applicable. You don't, NIST recommends you don't keep track of password history. Now remember this document was made five years ago. This is the current versions from 2017. So these recommendations I think are obsolete at this point, but anyway, the business owner, we can get this from the question. The business owner here is saying, I think 12 passwords. The history would be every month, right? We need the password to change every month and the history to be in line with changes for one year. So if it's one year, then this would have to be 12. No, no, that's password history would be the 12 most recent passwords. Yeah, okay, so it, according to this, we need the history to be in line with one year. So if we're changing the password every month for one year, we have 12 passwords in our history, one for each month. So that one you kind of have to figure out. The password aging, 
Uh, according to NIST, you don't need to keep track or force a password change um, with any certain number of days, okay? So according to NIST, this would be disabled. The business owner wants this to be every month, okay? Now, the complexity, according to NIST, 863, complexity is not required. And I really don't agree with that because the complexity really does make it, makes it more difficult for cracking software to determine the nature of a password hash, to perform offline attacks. I mean, we're not talking about protecting against online brute force and uh, dictionary and, and password attacks. We're talking about offline attacks. When attackers gather a bunch of password hashes and they analyze them offline. That's what we're trying to protect against. I think complexity really does protect against that, but according to NIST, you don't need it. And the business owner here says that we're gonna go with whatever the NIST says for complexity. No, no, he says that he can't stand crazy symbols or characters, which would be complexity, supposedly. So this would also be disabled. Now, password length, according to NIST, there's no need uh, the password length would be determined by the business needs. Now, according to here, you have to make a selection. And in this answer, I'm just going to tell you it's eight. Just remember that that's what CompTIA wants you to know for what NIST recommends as a password length. But that's not true. That's not what NIST 863 recommends. NIST 863 does not recommend a password length. They don't give you a hard guideline. They just say it needs to be based on the business needs. And I'm gonna read you that section after we're done with this question to show you that. It says here in the question though, that the business owner wants to increase the length by two to be extra sure. Now this one, if you didn't know this was eight, you would have no idea that this is 10. So I, I can see most students missing this unless they luckily guessed it. Uh, the password hint here, NIST, Recommends disabling a password hint, which is a good security practice. The business owner wants a password hit. He says, I need a hint, so uh, that's fine. We'll go with what the business owner says. And honestly, if you were a consultant and you were uh, implementing these changes, you're not a very good consultant. You have to explain to the business owner that these settings aren't very good, honestly. Repetition. NIST recommends that you disable this setting and the business owner, he wants to enable this thing. So if we read this in here, it's okay to use lucky numbers like one, two, three. This is, um, this goes against what NIST says. That's repetition. So that's what we're requesting here. The business owner wants this to be enabled. NIST recommends that that's disabled. Repetition like a string of numbers in a row and then using commonly word commonly found words in the dictionary NIST recommends that that's disabled and the business owner also wants that to be disabled because we see that here They don't want he doesn't want any pet names or favorite places Now this isn't very clear about the dictionary according to the the business owner settings This is why I really don't like this question if we just had the second column in this question this would be an okay question be mediocre okay but when you put the NIST recommendations now you're just requiring someone to memorize a list of requirements from a NIST document which why would you need to do that you know your organization first off should not be taking straight from NIST regulations and implementing them as your password policy you should be determining that as your cybersecurity strategy second NIST does not say a lot of these things, and this information is wrong. Let me show you why. But before we do that, I'm just going to make sure that this is correct here. Yeah, so this is, this is the right answer from what we say. And it says here, we'll read through this. I'm going to go through the document. You can tell I'm a little annoyed with this question. <laughs> All right, password history. Um, let's see. The password history here. Reused password recommendations not been modified or deprecated as part of traditional password usage. Therefore, the answer is NA. The company under the request that 12 passwords remember the history. Yeah. NIST has deprecated the need to change passwords routinely. 
Now, this is misleading here. NIST has deprecated the need to change passwords. NIST doesn't determine what the federal agencies do. NIST provides guidelines, and then federal agencies create their own password policy. If you look at, like, the Department of... I worked with the Department of Veterans Affairs, Department of Homeland Security, and their password policies did not follow exactly with NIST 800-63. They had complexity, length requirements, age requirements. All of those differed from NIST 863. So you can't say that NIST requires, NIST doesn't have the authority to require anything. Uh, anyway, so this policy is disabled. A business owner would like a password every month, which means 30 days. Got it. NIST has been deprecated, has deprecated the complexity requirements. The business owner agrees. NIST suggests a minimum password length of eight characters. That's not true. The business owner would like to increase it by three, two, making it 10. And this suggests that password hints should be disabled. Now that is true. Password, uh, the owner agrees. No, the owner would like hints. We found that in the scenario. And this does not recommend a list, a string of characters. So that's true. So let's take a look at the document. I want to talk to you what I'm talking or show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so this is the publication that this question is referring to. 800-63B, Digital Identity Guidelines. Okay, now there's a lot of language in here that we don't necessarily need to read. Talk about different information or authenticator assurance levels. We don't have to get into that today. Uh, different types of devices used for authentication, different cryptographic devices, cryptographic software, authenticator requirements, using biometrics. Uh, but then if we get all the way, you know, it talks about session management, you know, everything revolving around authenticating and submitting passwords. Now, if we go down towards the end, now we have an appendix list which says the strength of memorized secrets. This is where we're talking about passwords. So we go down here, strength of memorized secrets. We have four sections here, okay, or five with the summary. Uh, first, we have the most relevant. This is, uh, we have introduction here talking about just the generic guidelines. The length here says, password lengths have been found to be a primary factor in characterizing password strength. Passwords are too short, yield to brute force attacks, as well as dictionary attacks using words of commonly chosen passwords. It says the minimum password length that should be required depends to a large extent on the threat model being addressed. It doesn't say eight characters here for password length. I invite you to, you know, you can Check me on this, read the document. If I'm wrong, you know, give me a comment. Uh, if I'm right, give me a comment too. <laughs> but it doesn't say that there is a length. It does say that perhaps you would consider restricting an extra long password, but still there's no clear guideline there. Password complexity, it says that password complexity essentially creates it, makes it harder for people to memorize a password and has limited effect on the ability for the password, the protection of the password. Now remember this document was built uh, five years ago, okay? What's the publication date? I'm pretty sure it's July, 2017. July, oh, June, June, 2017, June, 2017. You know, now we have attackers using multiple graphics, processing units, GPUs, uh, stringing them together to quickly do brute force attacks on offline passwords. You know, th this set of guidelines is really obsolete. If we were to go with this and, and we were to go with the, the recommendations from CompTIA, okay, and we were to just have like a, a password that's eight characters in length. Okay, so let's let's pick some uh, random, random characters. Is that eight? Yeah, that's eight. It'd take 12 minutes to crack the password if we just had a, a minimum length of eight with no special characters, no complexity, okay? Even if we increase that to 10, six days, that's still not super good, okay? Now let's take that password length of eight, okay? We add some complexity, immediately makes it a little harder to guess, okay? And then we add some more complexity, uh, four months. Okay, now we have that same 10 characters, but we added some complexity and increases it to four months. Now, I would recommend you at least have your passwords 12 characters or more. 
uh, having a 12 character length or more really makes it a lot harder. I mean, you see, I just added two characters there and it went up to 16 centuries. That would be my recommendation as a security consultant. I wouldn't just be listening to the business owner and doing whatever they want. He clearly doesn't know what he's talking about in this scenario. So I know I'm on a soapbox here, but this is my least favorite PBQ. Because it's asking you to memorize guidelines from NIST, which by itself wouldn't be that bad. But when it asks you to memorize guidelines and it gets it wrong, that really irks me. Because how is the student going to understand or going to know what the question is? How are they going to know what the answer is if when they look at the NIST document, it doesn't tell them a clear solution. And the question says, oh, well, NIST says eight characters are the minimum. That's not what NIST says. So the question's absolutely wrong. And that really, really annoys me on this one. And I invite you to look at this document. It doesn't take long to read the strength of memorized secrets. We have the length here, complexity, uh, randomly chosen secrets. It's very loose guidelines. Most, you know, this is, these are general guidelines created so that agencies can take a look at this document, okay, and maybe use it to frame what their password requirements are gonna be. Because the, at the bottom, at the end of the day, you need to make cybersecurity fit the business needs of the organization. And a password policy with this week of guidelines wouldn't cut it for most organizations. So I hope that was helpful. I know it's a little different than most PBQs that do, but I uh, appreciate you guys, you know, joining in on this one. And I hope this was uh, gives you some framework. If you've been frustrated by this PBQ, let me know. You know, leave a comment because um, I'm sure you know a lot of my students ask me about this one. It's just it can be very annoying. So if you're being frustrated with this one and you're taking the class, don't be annoyed. You just have to memorize these settings for the test and that's it. And when the 701 version comes about, this is not gonna be on it. So don't worry about that.